Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here today we have an improper integral that was actually present in the 2017 drama film Gifted, which the plot actually revolves around um, an intellectually gifted seven-year-old Mary Alder, who's the subject of custody between her maternal uncle Frank Alder and her maternal grandmother um, Evelyn Alder. So I'm not really going to give too much of, you know, critique or feedback because this is a map video not really a movie review but um the movie is great so if you haven't seen the film i highly check i would highly check that out um another great film that revolves like focus on like the another mathematics perspective is um the 1997 um goodwill hunting it's also recommended that um you should also watch if you haven't seen it yet but anyway this improper integral was actually in one of the scenes where uh mary alder was um, asked by a professor to actually solve this um, integral, or rather prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Um, however, she, as pointed out, as she interjected, if you've seen the film, that she says that there was actually a mistake in the problem that actually makes this um, unsolvable, quoted by her. And what that mistake was, and that, well, mistake is, is that, um, and I actually did this too, is that there's actually missing it's missing a negative sign in the exponent because without that negative sign um this improper integral will actually be divergent and hence quoted by her unsolvable but not only um the negative is missing but that would also mean that um the absolute sign to the sigma um is missing as well so by fixing this so we have the negative over here and then we have the absolute value sign over here so that makes it solvable interestingly enough if you watch the film uh, when she does make the uh, fix the error of the problem given, but the, not only the hint was given as well, but there's also a mistake in the, um, that hint as well. And it's actually the negative sign is missing in here as well. So there we go. It's already fixed. So essentially, um, now the problem with these um, errors, you know, fixed and maintained, um, now it's solvable. And by um, solving this integral is actually by using, um, you know, this is actually in a form of a Gaussian integral. So um, I actually did a Gaussian integral, like the standard form of e to the negative x squared. If you want to check that out, the video oh, the video is in the description below. Um, so essentially, with this hint given, so yes, this is actually the you know to me personally is the easier method and there's other methods out there but this is actually by showing the double integrals equal to this but by doing so we actually need to use um, polar coordinates to do that conversion and again that was what that gaussian integral uh, what i did is essentially that same method but we just have uh you know different you know numbers included with the sig two sigma square as well but essentially the process is the same so um so basically we solve the double integral um, change that into polar coordinates and then solve as the, you know, the iterated integrals to actually, you know, achieve this side. And then it'll be much easier to show, you know, the, our given, which is this. So let's actually just jump right in. So of course, if we want to show with this hint, um, that means if we set this given integral as capital I, for example, so that would actually mean that, um, so if I just write this as capital I is equal to our, um, double integral or rather our, you know, integral from, infinity to negative infinity, negative infinity to infinity of our given, so e, then negative x squared divided by two sigma square, um, then dx. Now what I can do is um, to make this into a double integral, you know, I can just, you know, square both sides. So now we have i square is then just equal to our given, just, you know, do that twice as a product. So e, and then negative x squared, then 2 times sigma squared dx multiply by same thing again then by applying um since we can actually just replace the dummy variable so let's say for y so now this will become the same thing over here for this first you know expression negative x squared then divided by 2 sigma squared dx replace the dummy variable with instead now it's y so negative infinity infinity and e negative y squared divided by two sigma squared dy, then we now actually form ourselves a little double integral. So now negative infinity, infinity. Um, now we can just combine the exponents and just by doing that factoring with um, factoring out the negative. So we now we have negative then x squared plus y squared then divided by two sigma squared dx. 
dy. So now we can actually just supply the polar coordinates. So really it's just, you know, replace the, um, now it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared from that whole parametric equation, but also replace the differential because of the Jacobian. So replace that with r d r d theta. And of course with that, our bounds would change dealing with polar coordinates that we have we have infinite radius we're dealing with, but also the whole circle actually revolves around from zero to two pi. So we just replace it with our new bounds. So zero to two pi, and then from zero to infinity of e to the negative r squared divided by two sigma square, then multiply by r, and then dr um, d theta. Then we can see that um, easily we can now compute this inter this double integral. All we have to do is just you know apply u substitution. Suppose we let u equals r squared divided by um, two sigma square. And now just performing the differentiation both sides. So du would equal 2r then divided by 2 sigma square. Sigma, sigma square is just a constant in this situation. Then um, dr. Twos will cancel. And then what I can do is just, you know, uh, multiply a, a sigma square to both sides. So now we will have our own substitution of sigma square du is indeed just equal to r dr. So now with this, we can just, you know, perform the necessary substitution. And I treat this as like, you know, um, when you're doing, you know, use substitution, you can just replace the bounds when you want to evaluate that integral. But I'll treat this like I'm dealing with a indefinite integral. So what I'm saying is that inside this expression, we have, um, so replace the um, sigma square. So that's just a constant. So I'll just put that outside. So sigma square, then the indefinite integral. Well, that's a funny looking integral that I wrote. Um, I'll just replace this with E. And then this is um, now what? Negative u, then du. Okay, yeah, because it just replaced that, um, then d theta. And so just from performing that, um, you know, the indefinite integral over here, so we now we have, let's see, um, actually messed that up over here. This is still, <laughs> now we're moved to polar coordinates, so this is supposed to be zero and then two pi. There we go. Uh, zero, two pi. Then inside the expression, we have just um, sigma square. And then now inside this will be e to the negative um, or negative e to the power uh, negative. So we place back the r square divided by two sigma square. Evaluate this from infinity to zero. Then d theta outside. Then we see that we just plug infinity. So this will be e to the negative infinity, which is just zero. And then plug zero. So e to the zero is one. So negative. So zero minus negative one. So it's one. And so therefore our integral we have left is um, now just one times sigma square. So it's just sigma squared then d theta. Again, this is a very easy um, definite integral to compute. Sig sigma square is still a constant, so we can just move that outside. So now we have zero to two pi of d theta. Then we see that, you know, in respect to data, it's just one or, or the constant's one, but take that antiderivative, it's theta. So now sigma square, then data evaluate from um, zero to two pi. Easily you see that this is just two pi. Um, so two pi times sigma square. And so that's what our i square is equal to, which i square is this, you know, the um, double integral that we have over here. Uh, I just realized that I missed, uh, <laughs> I forgot another integral over here. So let me fix that, fix that. Um, so our i square is equal to two pi um, sigma squared. That's i square, which we just um, showed the hint over here. So now we just um, follow back to the original given. So we just take the square root of both sides. So we have that i is equal to the square root of um, two pi then sigma square. But you might be thinking, isn't the square root of sigma squared just sigma? Well, remember with square roots, you also got to consider the negatives, but there's also, you know, a close form of saying um, for some real value, uh, the square root of x squared is actually equal to the absolute value of x. And so hence we just, that's why the absolute value takes place over here with that fact. And so therefore we have just proven that our given is equal to two pi multiplied by the absolute value of sigma, which indeed we are now done with um, verifying our proof or rather verifying this calculation over here, just like that from the movie. Uh, yep, that was fun. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, go check it out. It's actually a very great watch for anybody who hasn't seen it. Um, and also Goodwill Hunting. There's also another movie that um, 
I think it follows the biography of uh, Ramanujan. I haven't seen that movie that um, I know I should also give it a watch too. So um, that should be a fun time for me. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.